in the preparation for Tai Chi, tea, and pandas. It's Chinese soft power on display at a new Confucius Institute in South Africa. It's one of some 60 on the continent. We have a growing relationship with China, with business and all kinds of things. Um, you, they need translators and uh, we are starting to teach Mandarin in South Africa. It's actually become part of the curriculum as of 2016. There's so many opportunities when you do Mandarin. In Africa, these institutes are welcome and growing. The first Confucius Institute opened its doors in South Korea in 2004. With the support of China's Ministry of Education, China says the institutes aim to promote Chinese language and culture. But the US and Britain say the centers spread propaganda. In 2020, the US designated the Washington-based Confucius Institute US Center as a foreign mission. More than 100 of the centers have closed on U.S. campuses. European countries, including Sweden, Finland, Norway, Belgium and Denmark, have been closing Confucius Institutes at universities in recent years. In the decade leading up to 2022, China says it has built Confucius Institutes in 159 countries and territories, with some 500 Confucius Institutes around the globe. The institutes mainly operate within local universities and with sister universities in China. All the universities, almost all the universities are, are sponsored by the Chinese government. So if you don't want to do anything with the Chinese government, then you, you can't collaborate with the universities in China. Liren Zheng, co-director of the Confucius Institute at the University of the Western Cape, is referring to critiques, mainly from the West, about these institutions. University of the Western Cape's Director of International Relations, Yumesh Bawa, says he's been warned. Well, with our Nordic partners in Europe, because we have some of them also who have um, closed on their Confucius Institute and have, and have cautioned us. Be careful about, about this as being a Trojan horse. Some academics warn the institutes interfere with free speech, where some faculty may even self-censor on topics critical of China. The Chinese government tends to be very, very unified and, and quite kind of proactive in its messaging, particularly around issues like Taiwan and Tibet. So, you know, so so in, so, so it, I can see how, on the one hand, it, it kind of amplifies that messaging, you know, so, so if, a, if a university, for example, in, you know, in, invites a, a Tibetan representative, then they might get pushed back from the Chinese embassy, but the, and now they might also get pushed back from the Confucius Institute. Singh says the concerns are unfounded. When we uh, have a Confucius Institute, we would have a local co-director, and the local uh, co-director would have control of all the curriculum and the activity, uh, the events. So we, we abide by all the laws and the rules and regulations of the local university, and our curriculum is uh, heavily scrutinized by the local faculty. On behalf of the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China in Captain, I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations on the official opening of the Confucius Institute. In November 2022, this Confucius Institute opened in Cape Town, South Africa. This is the sixth institute in the country. Western concerns about the Chinese institutes don't necessarily apply to the University of the Western Cape, says Bawa. We're very clear about what partnerships we make. And like everything else, we be cautious. We don't, have, we don't do partnership with people who do not share our values. Many people in the democratic nation have been receptive to China's educational institutes due to its history with Beijing. China supported many black liberation movements against colonialism and white minority rule, which led to discrimination and racial segregation during much of the 20th century. The Confucius Institute uh, partnership is one with the Chinese universities, and it's a, it's a, it's, it was a government program uh, to be able to have a space where they would be able to do uh, conversations on uh, policy, conversations on, on friendship and on culture and an appreciation of that. Now in South Africa we know that it's really, really important. Um, all over the world the Chinese in their history have always been very oppressed. Beijing's educational programs abroad operate in tandem with China's Belt and Road Initiative. 
First conceptualized in 2013, the Belt and Road Plan promotes economic and trade routes by land and sea between China and other countries through investments and the construction of infrastructure. China's Ministry of Education describes education as a service for the Belt and Road Initiative. Education programs such as Confucius Institute, scholarships, exchange programs and vocational training help develop talent and promote cultural exchange, which are key components of the Belt and Road Initiative. In Africa, educational programs are not only limited to everyday students. Last year, politicians from six African countries attended a new $40 million leadership academy in Tanzania opened by Beijing. The aim is to train African politicians. While some analysts fear these types of educational programs will promote Chinese communist ideology, others say not every nation shares this concern. Among African students, it isn't such a politically fraught issue uh, you know, in the global south as it is in the global north. While some countries warn China's educational initiatives are a threat to democratic values, other nations see educational partnerships with Beijing as an opportunity to benefit from China's Belt and Road projects. Kate Bartlett for VOA News, Cape Town.